Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to your studio and today I'm sharing with you a new phone case that I made for myself. Um, this is probably the fourth one maybe that I've made using this same clear case that I ordered off of Amazon. The case has started to yellow a little bit but um, it's still protecting my phone and you know, it's still intact and nice. It's just, it's the color of it. It's not as clear as it once was. But it was very inexpensive, so I'm not surprised <laughs> that it might um, be doing that. But anyway, I started out with the previous phone case that I had, that, you know, the insert. I just insert art in between the phone and the clear case is basically what it is. And I am making a, a base. I'm planning on collaging, so I'm making a base out of 140 pound watercolor paper that um, holds up to you know not getting wrinkled or anything in there and then I'm planning on using this this graphic here um, someone has been asking me repeatedly repeatedly for math art and to me those two things do not <laughs> they don't go together math is so precise and you know the angles have to be accurate and everything has to be so perfect to get the exact right answer and art to me is so much more subjective and free flowing and and um, and I don't know but the fact is is that everything in nature nature is created with this particular angle called the golden ratio or the golden spiral you can see it in faces you can see it in the side of someone's ear you can see it in fern leaves you can see it in nautilus shells Pretty much everything, everything that you look at that's in nature is made up of this particular, this particular mathematic equation which can be expressed with pi apparently. Um, I'm not a mathematician in any way, shape or form. Um, I used to love math and then I had a really bad teacher that was just uh, really unpleasant and I, I stopped learning in that class and I just kind of went downhill from there. I think I stopped at geometry and that was the last math class I took because it was required and then after that I didn't take any more math. I was much more interested in the creative side of learning <coughs> music and art and things like that. So yeah, math, art. Do they go together or do they not go together? Well, I think they kind of do. I printed this graph graphic off of the internet. Um, which is showing like the angles of this spiral. I thought it was an interesting graphic and it, I don't know, it looks like a shell. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I decided to use it as kind of a pattern. Um, I could mathematically figure this out and draw it, but why would I when someone else did it already? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to do it. Someone else already did it. So. I decided that I wanted to put it on my phone case as an experiment. I'm going to make a larger piece using this concept of this this golden ratio and how it it um, interacts with triangles, how it interacts with the spiral, how it interacts with circles. Um, you know, there's that uh, drawing of the Ves Vesuvian or Voluvian man. Um, that shows like how even the human form relates to these concepts, it's all over the place. The, the Mona Lisa, um, those, those art masters were really good at incorporating this mathematical concept into their art, but um, I'm just not that precise. I'm really not. <laughs> My angles and lines are all over the place. Um, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so I decided to do it with painty papers and I have these boxes of scraps that are sorted by color and um, I have a lot of them and I wanted to use the colors of the rainbow red orange yellow green blue indigo violet you know those colors and I wanted to kind of do them in order so I marked out on my pattern by the way I made a pattern using those two cut out uh, graphics which I taped together and it made kind of an S shape or the shape of a, a seahorse type of a shape which I liked 
because of course a, a phone case is a long rectangle and a, the spiral itself, if I just slapped it in the middle, it would just end up with all these rays coming out. I thought maybe putting two of them on there would be cool. So I taped the two of them together. I drew over the top of them using a pencil on some uh, deli paper. And did I draw the line straight with a ruler? I could have, but did I? No. <laughs> of course not. That would be too tedious. So I just drew them and then I'm kind of straightening them up as I go uh, with with my scissors, you know, making them more straight. And I keep laying the pattern over the top. I started out with the two small triangles that are in the, in the center of the spirals or kind of where the spiral begins. And then I extended the colors so that they would reach all the way to the edge because I, I didn't really feel like I needed to retain that, that seahorse shape I just, I wanted the pattern to, to, I don't know. I just, I thought it would look better if I just extended the lines out to the edges. So I'm using my little sketchily drawn pattern. Now, if someone is really a mathematician out there and they come and measure these angles to find out if I was precise or not, I'm going to tell you, I was not. The angles are not going to be perfect, but the overall effect is really cool looking. And so I don't care that, you know, I might have gotten a little bit wonky here or there <laughs> and, you know, straightening them up after the fact. But I, the, the trickiest part is getting all those those points of each triangle to be so tiny that they meet up into a dot. And so sometimes the papers overlapped um, just to get them to, to try to come right to a point in those two spots where the centers of the spirals are. And, you know, that's tricky. But I'm using a combination of glue stick and uh, Dina Wakeley's matte medium to apply these to the paper and just... Uh, laying down my pattern, trimming off the next piece. Um, I drew or I wrote R O Y, you know, the colors on each little pie piece. And so I know which color of paper to cut it out of. And then as I'm cutting them, what I'm doing is taking the little pattern piece turning it upside down and putting it on the back of the piece of paper that I want to cut, sticking it down with either a glue stick or um, the matte medium. And of course, remember, you need to put the right side to the back side of the paper. So your, your symbol that you wrote on there, your R or whatever, is going to be upside down, glued to the, the reverse side of the paper so that when you cut it out, it comes out the right way. And I did mess them up a couple times. <laughs> As you watch, you might see me do it, where I put it upside down and then the triangle didn't fit. And then I'm like, wait, something's wrong here. So then I would put the pattern back on. I'm like, oh, it's backwards. It's um, not, not flipped the right way. But I was trying not to be, you know, fussing about how perfectly precise I was being. So I was letting myself enjoy the process without really stressing over the math portion of it and the angles and the everything. And it's, it's, it's fairly accurate, but I'm pretty sure that if someone was to come along and measure it, it wouldn't be accurate. And I'm, I do need to make a larger piece that celebrates these concepts for someone who is getting their doctorate in mathematics. Yeah. Will he measure it? He might. So <laughs> this piece that I need to make uh, before Christmas, um, I don't know how much it's going to stress me out, but this was my first try at the concept and I think it turned out really cool. I, I like the colors. I like the pattern. I like the way, and, you know, it's pleasing to the eye and you don't look at it and say, oh, that's math. But yet it is. 
And I think that that's, that's the foundation, really, of good, masterful art, is that it's celebrating the concepts without, you know, do we look at the Mona Lisa and say, oh my gosh, look at that golden spiral, so perfect. That ratio is awesome. Or do we say, oh, look at that smile. She looks so, she just, she embodies serenity and she gives you a, a, that look of, oh, you know. And <laughs> if we don't think about the mathematical principles that may or may not have went into that, there is no proof. But people think that that math was used. <laughs> Maybe somebody just had a really good eye, you know. Maybe it was that. But anyway, so I'm continuing to cut and I'm I'm looking at the papers that I have and I didn't want to use, even though the color red is repeated several times, the color orange is repeated several times, I didn't want to use the same paper because I also wanted to, to represent that even though red is a color, there's a lot of different reds. There's a lot of different tones. And then also, of course, I like pattern. And so these are, some of these are jelly printed. Some of these are um, other, you know, pieces of paper that have paint on them. Just basically painty papers that I sort into these boxes so that I can use them in collage. And it's a way of sorting and storing and making it easy for me. So... The question that I'm asking myself as I'm watching this video is, why did I start in the middle? And I'm not sure I have the answer to that. That's just way, the way it seemed like it should be, that I should start in the middle of each little spiral and work my way out. So I started two spirals in the middle with the two little red triangles and then um, worked my way out. I don't know if this was the most uh, efficient way to do it. But anyway, I was able to keep keep the colors straight, keep the um, everything you know straight. A couple times, I I ended up having to write top and bottom on my little pattern pieces because I did have a top and a bottom, and I kept putting them on there wrong. <laughs> I finally figured out that I needed to write it on there. So I'm just working my way around the spiral in an angle going through the colors of the rainbow in order. Um, a lot of people that aren't really familiar with color ask what indigo is because that's a weird one. You know, we think red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple on a rainbow. That's what most people would put on a rainbow. But actually in the spectrum there is that indigo part. And what it is, is kind of like a a dark purple blue indigo is a beautiful color. And violet is more of the red in the purple, if you know what I mean. So that's how I'm trying to represent it using my papers. Were they 100% accurate? Everything doesn't have to be 90% accurate. That piece might be have a little bit too much blue in it for an actual true violet, but it's close. It's close enough for me. <laughs> so I don't know if this is tedious for you to watch it. Uh, this is sped up four times fast, and in a minute it's going to go to eight times fast. The project took me about two hours with between the figuring out the idea and the fussing and the fiddling and... Um, you know, figuring out how the colors would work out. It ended up having a lot of warm colors in the center and a lot of cooler colors on the edges. And at first that bothered me. I thought, oh, it's too repetitious in the middle. But um, I changed my mind and I liked the way it turned out. I just decided to go with it, decided to keep the colors in order like I had intended, even though it made them cluster with the reds, oranges, and yellows in the middle. And I think that's fine. In fact, I like it. I like the way my eye flows from the upper left corner through the middle and then comes out on the lower right. So I'm happy with the way it turned out. 
But I did second, third, fourth, fifth guess it. <laughs> As I was writing the colors on there, I erased them and tried to think of a different way, and then I put them back on. Yeah. So it was a fun project. I hope you guys make yourselves a phone case. If you can find the clear case, I will link the one that I used on Amazon, of course, um, for you if it's still there. I mean, this has been this has been a while because I think this is the fourth insert I've made for it. I think I am going to look for a new one um, that's more clear because this one is very yellowed now. But they're cheap. They're cheap, cheap. So, you know, is it going to protect your your phone as well as a life proof or uh, otter box defender or anything? No, it's it doesn't. But I'm not hard on my phone. I've never cracked a screen ever. And um, that is not the case for my son. Uh, he's gone through phone after phone after phone. But <laughs> I guess I don't do whatever it is that is so hard on phones because I don't have a problem with them cracking. So this little silicone clear case is fine for me. It keeps it from getting scratched. And then I also have, of course, one of those um, glass um, <clears throat> protectors over the top that's that the glass that shatters so that it takes the impact if you were to drop your phone. I have I have a um, cracked one of those things, those cover glass cover things over the top that stick on. But it did, didn't crack my phone, so that's what it's there for, is to protect the phone. It, I was carrying it on top of a stack of books, and it slid off the books and landed on the ground. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Next time, put it in your pocket. I think I was wearing leggings, so I couldn't put it in my pocket, and that's probably what happened. So that violet piece is probably a little bit too pink. Um, I don't care. I like it. This one might have a little bit too much blue in it for indigo, but I like it too. So I like the papers that I found in my boxes. I do need to go and uh, put some more papers in there. I have a whole big bin of stuff that's been collecting and I need to sort it. But you know, that's another thing. It's like a, it's like cleaning. <laughs> Sorting those papers out is like cleaning. I'll bet you there's somebody out there who would love to come and do that for me. Um, who really enjoys that type of an activity. I do not. <laughs> so the bin just keeps getting more and more filled. And I say, oh, I need to go and sort those into my color boxes. And then I never do it because I always have something else I want to do. So for the lighter weight papers, this matte medium works really great to put them on. The deli papers, the... Um, there's some, uh, even some craft colored deli paper. There's some text weight paper, but then for the more thicker papers, uh, there's some cardstock and some watercolor paper in there. And those papers definitely required the glue stick. And that's a permanent glue stick from uh, Elmer's brand, craft permanent glue. Um, and it's required to get these things to lay down these more heavier ones are the ones that have been kind of wrinkled in the box and I can't get them completely smooth and they want to pull up. So that's the reason that I have the combination of the two just kind of moving back and forth. You know, it's not because I'm crazy. It's just something that has to be done. Glue is a thing and I know I've told you guys this before, but different glues for different materials is required. That piece had a bunch of different um, washi tape on it and is a piece of watercolor paper with just layers of red washi tapes that I had used in a project and I, I don't remember what project it was but somewhere out there is probably on a video and that one was a tricky one to glue down. It didn't want to glue down. It was too thick. It was too heavy because it had the washi tape over a heavy piece of watercolor paper so I had to glue it down several times. And then this one is cardstock, and so it had to be glued also with a glue stick. That's just kind of how it works. Then the last little yellow pie piece 
is um, deli paper. So you can put that one on with a matte medium. So that's the reason that it goes back and forth between the methods that I'm using. So then once it was nice and dry, I wanted to just um, touch it up a little bit. Uh, first I cut out the hole again with my X-Acto knife. That's where the camera and the sensor that come on the back of the phone goes through or else you wouldn't be taking any pictures. <laughs> but I got out my Faber-Castell pit pens. These are India ink, so they're permanent, but they give you a little, a few seconds in which you can blend them with your finger before they dry. And then once they dry on there, they're permanent. And I just wanted to touch up and give some shadows and um, maybe straighten out a few lines that my scissors got a little bit wonky. And um, I don't know, just some little details that I like to add. It's, it's not dramatic. It's just, um, I don't know, touch up. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below if you have one. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, turn on that notification bell if you'd like to know when a fresh new video is released. I usually put videos out every other day, sometimes every third day if I'm traveling or something. Um, yeah, please do all those things that helps my channel grow and I really appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, people out there in the world might not find my channel because it won't be recommended if if I don't have interaction with my audience. So I like audience interaction and participation. It's fun. So there's uh, my little pattern. There's my completed piece. And now I'm just putting it in the case to make sure that everything lines up and that it fits on there correctly. And there you have it. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.